uh, Nikki and Naomi winning, especially since I want to see Becky win because I like Becky. Yeah, I like I said, I think I think the heels win, and I think it's just so those feuds can be extended to Elimination Chamber, and all six of them can get involved. Well, the other five that aren't Alexa Bliss can get involved in the title picture because since uh, Raw had a women's Hell in a Cell match, SmackDown's going to want to have a uh, a women's Elimination Chamber match. I, I, oh, I we, think that's the only reason the heels win is to extend the feud. And the elimination chamber is that a SmackDown show? Is that the one that's coming up in two weeks? It or? is. Yep, two weeks from Sunday. Okay. So yeah, I, I could I could see that happening. Yeah. So yeah, I like your theory better than mine. <laughs> All right. Uh, nothing... I, I have no idea what to believe in anymore. Yeah. Who knows with WWE creative? Uh. All right, nothing but championship matches until the Rumble. So, uh, cruiserweight match, Rich Swan versus Neville. Pretty sure Neville's going to take it since he's the only one they're really investing any time in. And Rich, the out, I'm sorry, the outrand, the outlandish Rich Swan. Uh, yeah, I feel like they don't have, they like him, but they'd rather have the belt on Neville and have somebody chase. Yeah, I, I mean, 205, I don't know ratings for WWE Network programs or anything like that, but Neville's doing right now what I think we thought that Kalisto was going to do in that he was going to be that main roster guy that He's going to do lucha of things, Tom. bled down into the 205 and the cruiserweight division and be that guy that the mainstream people know and go, Oh, okay, cool. I know him. Oh, he's the cruise. Who's he taking on and be able to do the type of matches that he's supposed to do with opponents that can actually work that kind of match and get a few more people over when you, when people are saying, Oh, what, what's Neville doing now? Oh, he's, he's on the two Oh five live. He's doing the cruiserweight things. That's going to bring people in. Still plenty of people have no idea who the hell rich Swan is. I like rich Swan and all, He's not a marquee name. Mm-mm. He's not a main roster guy. And he's kind of a transitional guy because they've been putting the belt on P- just person after person and it hasn't stuck. They put it on TJ Perkins. That didn't go over that well. They put it on Kendrick thinking, all right, well, you know, people know who Kendrick is and he's kind of got to start. No, that didn't work either. Now they put it on Rich Swan because, oh, well, he's exciting. People are going to like it. Yeah, that's not really working either. All right. So they're going to put it on Neville, and we're going to see what's going to happen with Neville. So, yeah, definitely Neville going through until Austin Aries heals up enough to get pissed off at everyone and destroy everyone. I can see Neville Neville holding this, the belt to Mania. Whatever face they put in chase mode takes it at Mania. Uh, Aries should be healthy by then. Aries takes it off the face. Yeah, I think that's that works. what happens. You know, and like I said, I don't know who they. I honestly don't know who they have chase after that. It could be Tazawa for all I know, since he's supposed to debut soon. Uh, but I I hear there's a ginger gentleman that is probably the only other cruiserweight that's over right now. Man, I love Jack Gallagher, but I don't know that putting the, the belt on him is the right decision. They're doing fine with what he's doing right now. He's kind of doing his little shtick and going over lesser guys and they would need to build him up as a serious contender rather than this goofball comedy character that he is now. Yeah. He's right now. It it works well enough that you, you turn around, you have a champion and you have Gallagher keep those separate. And you have two things technically to watch two Oh five live for you put the two of those together. You only have one thing to technically watch it for and you lose half of Hell, draw. Cedric could chase, which would be fantastic. Yeah. But, um. All right. Raw Women's Championship: Charlotte versus Bailey. Uh, oh, I have no. Charlotte, yeah, I have keep, no idea Char- how you feel about this. Charlotte's going to keep the belt because Bailey's going to take her off of her at Mania, and Bailey's going to get a WrestleMania moment, and that's how it should happen, and I think that's how it will happen. So, that's all. That's my only thing. It's like Charlotte's going to win. I don't know what the finish is going to be and how it's going to go down, but. Bailey wins it at Mania because that makes the most sense, and that's what they should do. That's what WrestleMania should be about. Bailey hasn't been chasing long enough, uh, not not to be whatever, but Bailey's best angle came 
over her last year or so it was in NXT when it was, you're not good enough. And then she slowly built herself Mm -hmm. up to this established, like established contender that she could be. And then eventually getting to the point where she was able to win the title. We don't have that kind of time here for whatever reason. So it's going to be her pretty much continuously trying to take on Charlotte and getting so close, but just a little bit away. And it, it's something that her old man used to do. Uh, not, um, not Bailey's old man. I have no idea what he used to do, but <laughs> Ric Flair would have these matches uh, back in the old Crockett days where, I mean, he held the title and he'd take on these like guys like say Ricky Morton and Ricky Morton really shouldn't have been in the same room as Flair. And that's how, you know, you're a tag team guy. You're, you know, you're, you, you've got those little kid fans. I've, I've got the women, you've got the girls and he treated him with absolutely no respect. And Ricky fought and tried to prove himself. And it was just that, that pop when he was able to, you know, get his hands on Flair and actually show that, he could be the one, you know, like I can be in the same level as you. I can defeat you. And of course he never did. Cause right. I mean, Ricky Morton, but that that's the kind of path they have to go with Bailey. And they've told this story for what, two months now. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's not been long enough. So I think that she puts on a good match and I don't know if there's Tom foolery involved or Bailey just, screws up makes some kind of dumb mistake not dumb mistake but i mean like mistake that a more skilled wrestler wouldn't have made like she should have made the cover here but she ended up going to the top rope again or you know something along those lines and did something dumb and charlotte escapes with a victory and she's got to keep coming back and coming back and eventually it's it's yeah i could see her going for that wrestlemania moment uh, it gives them another two months plus to build the story. So, yeah, I surprisingly agree with you that Charlotte retains. My only thing is they need to strengthen the Bailey character. Whiny, or not whiny, but that's not the word I was looking for, but uh, whiny fangirl Bailey is not the character we need. We need fiery underdog don't think less of me because of where i came from don't think less of me because i was a fan i'm here i've made it this far i'm gonna keep going bailey and we haven't seen that yet so they have to get to that point before they put that strap on her or it's going to be a disaster and she will fail and i don't want to see her fail because it worked so well in nxt when they told that story over that amount of time of you know she you know she loses a little bit she gets a win every once in a while and she builds up and then she starts getting the fans behind her and then she starts getting her adversaries behind her until she finally takes down her foe and that's what we need here well i think the fangirl thing it, that can be built upon where she turns around and it, it does it seems like she's awestruck and that's what they're playing off of that you know she's the awestruck fan and that's what it's going to come down to they're going to put her on a big stage and i could see her like losing in five minutes like she totally gets overwhelmed by the fact that she's on this huge stage. It's not raw. It's a pay-per-view. I hate it's that the Alamo Dome. So she turns around and like ends up like pretty much just kind of bombing out and like getting frustrated after the fact. And like, I guess I wasn't ready, you know, and Charlotte just rips into her and is like, no, you're not ready. You're not at my level. And yeah, maybe, Maybe we build from that, but yeah. All right. We'll have, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, WWE championship, the SmackDown title on the line. Uh, AJ Styles is defending against John Cena. I'm going to let you championship. I'm going to let you go first because I'm getting ready to scream a lot. I know a lot of people are saying that Cena takes the title here. I don't see Cena taking the title here. Um, Cena's too busy at this point. And I mean, yeah, I guess we could kind of go into him 
bringing the title to Mania and that type of thing, but I I think he's fine in this kind. Con- they're going to transition him to a part time role and to give be able to put Styles because uh, I think the two of them are going to have a great match. And I think it's just going to be a thing of putting together another twenty five minute match, and Styles pulls it off again, like. And maybe Cena starts questioning himself and maybe that's what causes him to quote unquote, take a little step away and be like, or maybe he'll go for some kind of match at mania. And that allows him to take that step away. But um, I, I see styles holding onto the belt and maybe that's my naiveness shadowing through, but I, I think he holds onto that belt. All right, here I go. Go scream. There we go. Cena's going to win the belt, and he's going to tie Rick's record, and it's going to be 16, and it's going to happen at fucking Royal Rumble because we need to have the Undertaker-Cena match. Now, I want to see the Undertaker-Cena match. That is two that is two of the top five icons in WWE history. But we're going to throw away number 16 at the Royal Rumble. That's a moment that needs to be made for WrestleMania. Now, maybe Styles retains, Cena interrupts the Rumble, wins, and then we go back to this feud, which is also way too long and convoluted to to put on WrestleMania. Then we're extending this feud even further. Dear God, what? Are, why? Why is this match happening at the Royal Rumble to begin with? Why are we not just having a title match at Elimination Chamber? There are so many problems this is getting ready to create. And I want to see Cena Undertaker, and I don't want the belt on the line when it happens. I want Styles to hold the belt because I want him to go on and face any number of people on this roster that aren't John Cena because we've seen it. We've been there. It already happened at one of the big four this year. It happened at SummerSlam and Styles went over clean. That should have been it then. End of story. I'm done. Okay. I don't know that any of that rant made sense and had any kind of through line. But to me, this is a disaster. There's no good way out of this whatsoever. I mean, you can still set up Cena Undertaker, but I I could yell for another hour. (laughs) Well, I told you, AJ's going to win, so it's going to be okay. Uh, I hope so, but I don't think it's going to happen, and I'm real sad, Tom. All right. Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns in what has now been made a no-disqualification match. For the Universal Championship with the stipulation that Chris Jericho will be in a shark cage above the ring. There are so many things going on here, Tom. So, is it a no holds barred, no disqualification match? No, it is simply no disqualification. Some holds may be barred. So, no no curb stomps. Well, those those are banned. Yeah, so. Pile drivers. So that's why it's. Are, are they being officially the banned? Or? Being lowered from the rafters is banned. Yeah, well, let's not talk about that. <laughs> so so many things are banned. Um, I don't know how to call this match because a lot of this hinges on... There's so much up in the air on Sunday because I... Honest to God, with the way that the Rumble match is structured, I have no idea what's going to happen. What I want to happen, what I think will happen, but I do I I can't definitively say this is what's absolutely going to happen. Owens could retain. That would be great. And then he could go on to feud Jericho who could enter the rumble uh, at Mania. And that could finally break up. And that would be awesome. That would be amazing to finally see that break apart. Reigns could win it and go on to, to face the winner of the rumble. Which I'm fine with. Reigns has been putting in good work this year, no matter what people want to say and what people want to think. He's had nothing but great matches on pay-per-view. 
Boo. You cannot take away from him simply because creative goes, here's a piece of paper that has some words on it and they're terrible, but who gives a shit? Sound like an idiot, Roman. 